back to the channel. It's Lauren. Nice to see you. I feel like I'm in the midst of decluttering and everything and I haven't really like been face to face with the camera very much. So I thought today we could just talk about new beauty launches because it's been two weeks since my last one, which I'm like, where did the time, where? April really felt like such a weird month. Like it went really fast, it went really slow. I'm feeling pretty excited today. I'm gonna be filming this probably the day I put it up, but today marks my like fully vaccinated day. Like I'm very excited about it because I'm actually going to be able to see my family and I haven't in a year and a half almost. Like trying not to cry. <laughs> like I am so excited. It's <laughs> I'm gonna get my hair done. I'm gonna meet my brother's babies. He's literally had two babies <laughs> since we've been apart. Um, so I'm very excited about that. It's really just exciting for that to be able to happen. So that's kind of the cloud nine I'm on. Uh, but I thought we could just talk about some new products that have come out. There are some beautiful things um, that I'm tempted by for sure. And yeah, you guys know how it is. We just talk about the new stuff. If we are interested, if we're not, why, why not? I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts in the comments. So of course leave those down below. Also wish me luck because after I film this, I will be filming my try on of all my highlighters and when I say I'm scared, I don't even think I fully understand what that actually means. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna count them. They're all in front of me, so I'm gonna count them really fast. I think I have like 67 that I will be trying on and I'm just, I'm just a little petrified. I've been like kind of putting it off. Like I think like I would like to watch that video, but the reality of filming it is kind of setting in. So <laughs> wish me luck, y'all, wish me luck. Anyway, that's enough of that. Let's just get into some of the new stuff. Let's do it. First, let's talk about the Flower Punk collection from Kaleidos. You guys know I'm excited for this. I knew something was coming down the pipeline. And so I was excited to see what it was gonna look like inside. The palette looks beautiful to me. It has some like really pretty minty greens. There are some more like swampy lime greens as well as pinks and peaches. And those are really some of my favorite color combinations. So I am beyond excited for this. I think it's gonna be really cute. I tend to love Kaleidos's quality. Y'all know, y'all know. So of course I'm excited for that. I really love the packaging also. You can buy like a whole box or something with it, I think. Let me see if I can find a picture of that. The outside of this box is really quite pretty and it reminds me of like, like when I was looking at wallpapers to put in the back, I was like, what do I want? And I looked at some of these types of prints. I tried to go a little bit more conservative because I was like, ah, I don't, <laughs> you know, it's going to be in the background every single time. So I was trying to like play it cool. But this type of print, like where it's kind of jungly, I really, really like it, but it's still fun and funky with the colors. So I'm excited. They always do such a great job with theming and fantasy, which you guys know I love. So I am excited. They also have some of these like clay lip products, Cloud Lab Lip Clays, and I'm excited to try these. There's a couple different sets. It looks so pretty. Like I'm just, I'm excited. I should be getting that in PR, so of course I'll be doing a video and hopefully I can get like comparison swatches and all that from past palettes in case you want that. But yeah, overall, super exciting. Definitely can't wait to try it. All right, it's like the season of the blush, which we already knew. I've been super into blush draping for a while now, but it's, I feel like coming into full swing, powders, creams, any type of blush, it's coming out. And I'm not gonna lie, like I am te I'm tempted. I'm gonna try to hold back as much as possible. Maybe I'll try a few, maybe I will, but I'm gonna try to keep it a little bit under control. We just saw my blush and bronzer declutter. I have some good blushes, but you know, I'm always down to try a few more, maybe, maybe. So let's look at some of what we got going on. It looks like the Loved Flush blushes from Too Faced are coming back. I always thought this packaging was really cute, and I actually think that this packaging and the way they look still seems very relevant to today, which isn't always the case. The promo picture, I don't know if they're only coming out with these blushes. I mean, I love a peachy blush, but really I love those kind of terracotta, rosy brown type blushes. And I'd love to see those obviously in a range for different skin tones. So looking at this, there seems to be a lot of like lighter blushes, but I really don't see ones that I would pick up um, with more brown in them that are a little bit more like neutral. That's what I like, but also a range. I don't know what's up with that or if they're just not all here. There are some cream blushes coming out from KBD. These are kind of in like the tube serum type blushes. That's what they look like. They're supposed to be lightweight, long 
wearing liquid gel blush for a modern dewy jelly skin glow. I love all those words. There's a couple that I'm like interested in in color. I'd have to see them in person. I think this is one of the things like with all the blushes coming out for me to try to shop as best I can like with me in mind instead of just like ah blushes and <laughs> going a little ham, if you will. I really want to be looking at the colors, the tones that I am either gravitating to currently, so that way I do get use out of them now, things that I've used a lot in the past, and really just making sure that I'm not getting sucked into a new blush formula to try, but also really taking into mind the colors, what I use, what I find flattering. And I think one of the traps that I can get into with um, you know, shades and stuff is I can be like, oh, I don't have that shade. And so that might be become a reason that I can trick myself into buying something because it's it's expanding into a shade I don't have but when it comes to blushes I don't necessarily do that like I I don't mind having a bunch of colors that are very similar because that's what I tend to reach for so those actually get more use than buying a hot pink blush because I don't have one but like the reason I don't have one is because I don't use hot pink blush very often which is kind of a bad example because I do like using hot pink blush but you know what I mean I'm just saying maybe if you're feeling kind of like all the blushes are personally coming for your wallet like they are mine uh, maybe that's just something to keep in mind to kind of fend you off like realistically looking at the launch what colors are there and how you think those would actually look on you and how you'd actually like them so when I do that bringing it back to this video when I do that with the KVG ones I'm kind of like hmm I want to see them in person because when I see them in like this color block swatch I like the colors a lot and I see a few that I would enjoy when I see them swatched on the hand they look a lot different they look very bright um, and colorful and I don't know any more brown I love the brown <laughs> like those brown rosy type colors are really what I'm into like brownie peach and brownie rose like we can go cool or warm but I like to have that kind of neutral base to them anyway intriguing love to see it still regardless right okay this is an exciting launch not a blush sorry we're like swerving over here for a second but Sol de Janeiro is coming out with a dry shampoo now if this had come out in like 2017 I would have like knocked down doors and would have fought people for for this dry shampoo like I was really into Sol de Janeiro at the time I was really into the brand I love the smell of the boom boom cream I really do but I've kind of like I don't know <laughs> maybe it's all just gone to glow recipe I think <laughs> I really just haven't explored their products or used any of their newer products since they've expanded their range that they offer like they have shampoos and conditioners they have a new scent I think even so um yeah I definitely I would be interested in trying this I guess is what I'm trying to say there's like a different scent now and not sure if this is that scent or the you know like classic scent but I am definitely I mean I'm kind of interested especially for summer I could see it being like a fun thing to use in your hair but I'm also someone who like finds dry shampoo fun you know so I don't know <laughs> I don't know what that says about me. There's also a deodorant it looks like, which honestly terrifies me. I'm just like, mm, I'm gonna, s <laughs> I want you to work, but like I have trust issues when it comes to deodorants, y'all, that aren't like Dove or like Secret. Okay, if you're not one of those two, I'm totally side-eyeing you and I am terrified that you will hurt me. Yeah. <laughs> or you're just not all you're cracked up to be. Like, yeah, maybe if you're just like not sweaty, then it works for you. Or like, oh, maybe if you don't have like, I don't know if it's like the size of my arms. Like, I don't know if it's like my size is like my body. I don't know what it is, but it's not working out for me, okay? <laughs> Okay, anyway, next. Wow, more blushes. We're back to blushes. We're back to blushes. These are from Bite Beauty. They are the Daycation Whipped Cream Blush. We loved the word whipped, daycation. They're selling a fantasy of tropical and all that crap. This shade selection's interesting. I'd love to see them in person. They're supposed to be a long wearing creamy blush that gives you a healthy and natural looking finish with a luminous glow. They're $32 each. You hoo. See, this is where I'm like, oh yeah, okay. <laughs> get it together because I cannot drop like $300 on blushes right now. Uh, and I don't want, do I really want to? That's also a question. So anyway, I'm confused by how these were. Oh, okay. I thought these clear tips, like these little like clear nozzles were the product almost like a pencil, like or a crayon, uh, but they are not. They're just like clear and you squeeze from the bottom. This packaging, as much as it's different, it catches your eye, whatever, seems kind of gimmicky in a way that's like, yeah, cute for a photo. When you actually think of practically using it, I'm like, is it essentially the Glossier hand cream that came out like this? 
which is kind of like if you actually want to like get and use the product it just I don't know that's something I think about sometimes of just like is it practical though is this practical again I haven't touched it I don't know maybe it's like so soft and squishy to do but definitely something I'm kind of like uh, okay mm, okay overall though they look cute overall they look cute you guys know love blushes okay, moving on to these next blushes these are some blush palettes from ColourPop they're like highlighters as well um, and these quads are really beautiful there's five different options and I mean I love to see this and they're starting to do this like clear packaging at ColourPop I mean I personally like the cardboard packaging you know in a lot of ways but I do think that this visibly looks pretty and I like to see them I love the fantasy again with the blushes like seriously you guys get it but one of the things that stops me from getting these is looking at the shades and thinking of my personal preferences really there's one in here that maybe has more of those brown peachy shades but I'm still like eh. like I'm not like in love with it right I'm more in love with the idea of blushes I'm more in love with the idea of summer and luminosity and all of that right that these are all selling and so yeah just like breaking that down is helping me kind of like stop stop it stop it <laughs> They're really drying me. They are really drying me. But yeah, when I look at these, there are a lot that I personally don't want. Like I don't love for me these like really hot pink or kind of bubble gummy pink blushes. I don't really want those. And so that's what's stopping me. They're also $12 each, which I think is an interesting price. I don't think it's like too expensive necessarily. But when we do kind of like look back at like where ColourPop started and the pricing that they had, you know, it's definitely different. It's definitely a different price point than it, it was at one point. Although I think they've stepped a lot of stuff up too. So, you know, just something I think is notable that these blush palettes aren't to me priced in a way that's like I'll just throw all of them in the bag I'm gonna get every single one because it's 12 they're 12 dollars a pop even if you were gonna get three that's still 36 dollars but then I just realized right now <laughs> like 36 is still a lot for ColourPop to me for three like products but at the same time <laughs> The Bite Beauty blush is 32 for one. So you can't deny it's still affordable. Anyway, whatever, moving on. I wanna talk about the Sigma Core De Rosa blush palette because it's really quite beautiful. And it is um, kind of one noted, like it's more of those neutrally brown type blushes, but that is what I've been into. I did actually get this in PR and I've been using it and it's pretty. Like I think if I hadn't been sent it, I don't think that I would have bought it. Like I don't think it would have tempted me enough to buy it, but I do, like the tones of these and these are kind of the tones I'm looking at in the shade ranges of other blushes that are coming out but I still think I do like like again I mean I like a blush palette but something with six is not as tempting as something with four and I think that like a duo still is kind of this perfect thing to me of like maybe you can have one that's shimmery maybe you can have one that is more matte you can have two different colors that are similar maybe or play off of each other I still feel like that duo product for me right now makes me feel like I'm getting value and more than one and I kind of like that but it's not so overwhelming or there's not going to be so many choices in there that I'm not going to use them like I'm going to neglect one or the other you know what I mean so anyway I don't know I thought I would bring that one up because that's another blush product that's come out recently I mean it really has been like that many blushes like that many I want to say one of the most notable and kind of the most exciting and maybe even one of the ones that I'm most tempted by are the blushes from Pat McGrath these are the divine blush collection there are nine different colors they look just so so pretty they're permanent though so that's something that I'm like okay I don't have to like rush out and get them I can kind of see reviews I can kind of buy when I feel maybe not so overwhelmed with all the blushes and can be a little bit more clear in what I want and why I want it you know what I mean so these just look so stunning and um, I haven't really tried a ton of stuff from Pat McGrath I have one palette that I like some of the shades I, I'm, I don't know it's it was a lot I've been interested in the quads for a long time since I'm so into blushes I'm like maybe this is the next best thing I also just love the colors that have come out there are so many different options and I really love that it doesn't feel like anything's really repeated like every color feels picked with purpose and with intention and I really love seeing that and I think that's just a testament to like her skill and just like an artistry really so those are probably honestly the top 
most tempting. Even with those cream blushes, like, yeah, they're nice. Like, yeah, they look okay. But when I think of something that I'm gonna like buy potentially, even if it's expensive and I'm gonna hopefully keep in my collection a very long time because that's what I tend to do with blushes. Like I have them if I like them for a long time. <laughs> I have them for seven years, you know. I can see one of the Pat McGrath ones really staying in my collection for a long time. And the fact that it's powder, that is something to consider. I know we're all here loving the cream blushes. I'm, I'm here with you, but they do expire. I mean, creams expire fast faster than um, powders. So it's something to just kind of keep in mind when you're purchasing or wanting to like get in on this trend or try different formulas. Potentially think about how long these might last in your collection. And if you're buying a ton of them at one time, how possible is it for you to use and enjoy them to an amount that you'll feel great about by the time that maybe they're off and maybe staggering some of those purchases either with you know, powders and creams, or just like later down the line, like buying a cream, trying it for a couple months, maybe buying another cream down the line. You're just like kind of extending the life of these products instead of buying them at one time. I don't know if that makes sense, but just, I thought I'd just throw that out there. We're, we're talking a lot about the blushes, okay? I got a lot of thoughts. Really loved those, probably would pick those up. One I just don't like, <laughs> I just hate these so much. These look so hideous. If you told me these were ABH, I would have been like, you're lying to me. These are the summer inspired face three in one essential. What are these? I think that these look cheap. These look like maybe holiday even. Like there's something about the way that they're packaged. I just think these missed the mark on so many things. I really do. I don't like the tones that they've picked for any of them for many different reasons. I just think that this was not good. It really wasn't, it really wasn't good. The packaging's weird. Like everything about it just feels so odd. I don't know what they're, I'm like, what are you doing? What are you doing? What is this? Like we haven't seen something from ABH in a long time that I feel like is very good. And this could have been something that was good and it wasn't and I don't know. Not into that at all. Definitely don't want to spend the money on them. Like literally the first one I saw a picture of them I was like oh those look like those naked palettes from Urban Decay like they really do look like that I'm not really into those <laughs> if you can't tell if you can't tell not blushes but there are some bronzers coming out from Juvia's Place I'm actually kind of interested they're duo products I think that's very on trend I feel like that's kind of this perfect amount to me I don't know if that's just me but I like that <laughs> I like that there are some options but it's not like overwhelming you don't have like decision fatigue it doesn't feel like you're wasting half the product you know what I mean I'm kind of interested in those. There is an eyeshadow palette that's coming out with it as well. Um, and then some different lip products. I probably wouldn't be interested in the eyeshadows. I'm trying to be really intentional with the eyeshadows. Another palette that I'm excited about and I'm so sad I didn't, I didn't make it. I didn't get the freaking order in. So I'll be buying this on the restock is the Annette Makeup and the Menagerie Cosmetics collaboration. The Serenity palette is really pretty. It's very Annette, it's so Annette. I love the butterflies in the outside. I have some different Menagerie singles and they're super pigmented so I think this is just like a perfect like it's a great collab it makes sense it totally makes sense with like who's collabing with who what they're coming out with and so I definitely want to pick this palette up I also like know Annette I've met Annette so yeah I definitely want to get this palette and I'm like so sad that I didn't make it for the launch so I know it's not limited edition so I can get it but yeah I need to <laughs> I need to get that one and so I'll be looking out for restocks I'm excited to see everyone's looks with it and it's really exciting for Annette to get her collab and for it to finally come out. I'm really happy for her. So that one I definitely want. It's super colorful. And this palette is an example for me of like really pretty washes of color on the eyes that I can see doing with it. Like that's what I'm excited to do some color blocking and like kind of playing with one, maybe two colors as I like create a look in my style. You know what I mean? And then I know Annette has like a video using the palette having like 10 looks already up. So that's definitely a great reference. If you're kind of like, how would I use this or already have it? Or once you get it to check that video out. So I'll leave it linked. I'll leave that video linked. There are some eyeshadow palettes from Estate Makeup. These almost look like blush palettes in and of themselves. Do they say that? Like, I feel like they could be. They're like a terracotta type one and then more of a pink maybe a little mauve -y. These to me, it's not like they're bad. I think they're useful colors. I just have them so many times over in my collection that I'm not really interested in trying these ones out, you know? I don't know. They kind of look personally a little boring. Like 
a little boring. There's some stuff from Morphe and Coca-Cola, I guess. Oh, wow. I didn't know they were gonna do a second collaboration, but I guess they are. It's kind of like 70s inspired, 1971. I like this better than the first Coca-Cola collaboration, I guess. Like, I think this has more vision, so I do like that. Even the palette itself is prettier. It's still very heavily neutral, even though my eye wants to trick me and be like, but there's a bright, like, orangey coral, and there's, like, pretty pastel -y colors, and I do like those, and I think those are actually quite trendy right now. Um, I've mentioned this in other videos, but kind of as like a wash on the lid where you just have that shimmer kind of everywhere, something simple that's definitely been more in. And so I can see those playing well for that, but I wouldn't purchase this palette at all. Like it's not enough, <laughs> not enough. Plus I have all the color, I mean, I have them. And so like when I'm looking at stuff, like I have so much, you guys have seen my collection, literally, you guys are like seeing it currently in my declutter series, but that necessarily isn't going to stop me from buying something new. I just have to have more than just like, that's a pretty color. It has to be more than that, you know? Like it has to feel that full fantasy. There's something about the way that they're doing these colors or envisioning this collection that sells it to me different, you know what I mean? And this isn't, this isn't doing it, you know? Like it's good for Morphe, but <laughs> you know. Okay. Okay, there are some things from Fenty. These are the Bright Fix Eye Brighteners. Let's see, the under eye brightener that easily hydrates, brightens, and conceals. It sounds really nice. Like I <laughs> I do really like this. And this might potentially be a really great uh, dupe in some ways. Like it's a different texture than the Becca under eye corrector, but this could be maybe something for someone who's looking for a similar product. Maybe this will work. There seems to be a more like pink brightener one in here. This is so on trend. This seems to work well with the, I think it's the Ease Drop foundation that Fenty recently launched. It's in that same realm. It's more minimal, lightweight, easy color coverage, easy on the go type makeup. And that's what we're seeing a lot of right now. There's like an aerial makeup collection out with Makeup Revolution. There's a blush palette and a highlighter. Of all the blush palettes I could buy, this is not the one I would. Um, and I don't know. I mean, I think that the Disney stuff has happened so much, honestly, that I kind of, I just like don't recognize it a ton. Like it just takes a lot for it to be a really good collaboration, I think. I need more than like a still shot on the packaging. Like I just need more than that. I need more. And I like smaller color stories because it makes me feel like you actually tried. Like you, <laughs> if you have this huge color story that's supposed to represent Ariel, which is this one. I mean, I don't think this one's as bad, but it's just kind of random and it's kind of tons of stuff. There's two yellows and two blues that are similar and two corals. And I'm not saying those aren't in there and that they couldn't be good, but I, I think it'd be more fun. Like let's have a little flounder six pan, right? Let's have a little Sebastian six pan. Okay. <laughs> I don't even think that that's that creative, but looking at these things that sometimes keep coming out with Disney, I'm like, well, maybe I'm genius. I don't know. <laughs> like, why isn't this happening? If they did that, I just think it would do so well. It would do so well. What, <laughs> what are you doing? Who are you hiring to do this stuff? Seriously, just saying. Just saying. So yeah, no. And it's like, it's about the packaging. It is about the packaging. And this packaging just seems like tired. Like it seems like they didn't want to do that much, but it's like, if you have the Little Mermaid, then do it on the packaging and you're gonna sell like 10 times more. I think I'm pretty sure I'm right about that. <laughs> Cause maybe you'd get me, you'd get the people who are kind of like, I like I like Disney stuff. I like the Little Mermaid, but I'm not gonna buy that makeup. But maybe if you made it cute enough, I would. And I don't think that's cute enough. Okay, anyway, <laughs> the NYX Butter Glosses. Okay, what is going on? I don't know if they're new or they're just back, but the Butter Glosses were very popular and um, I love these colors. So all of these have a lot more brown in them. They're more neutral and I think that they're beautiful. I remember loving the Butter Glosses. I remember the scent is super sweet in a very, I thought, well, at the time it was more distinct of a sweet scent. And yeah, I think that it makes sense that they're re-promoting these. These are products that were like, I don't wanna say ahead of their time because they were very popular when they came out, but like, I feel like we've come a little full circle where some of that stuff that was popular is now coming back around to being, you know, trendy for makeup right now. And so, yeah, this makes sense to me. And I love the colors, love the colors. Interested, five bucks, like, gotta love it, gotta love it. There's some new Hydra effects, like, 
uh, water activated liners or just like paints from Suva Beauty. And these ones are like UV, which I think is super fun. I think they've done that type of stuff before. I would love to know, I'm kind of like polling you guys and just asking, do you guys use these water activated liners? Because I know I see them, I see them all the time online. I see so many creators creating amazing looks. They look so good. I just wonder about people who aren't creating like art looks online. Are you using these? How are you using these? How do you make these every day? Because I have a few that are pastel that were sent to me. I think they're really fun and you can use them as bases. You can use them in other ways, of course, than just like graphic liner, but I never reach for them. Like definitely not on the everyday. So I just wonder how you use them. How do you make them every day for you if you do? Just wondering, cause I'm like trying to incorporate them more, but I just find like, really it comes down to, <laughs> I do my makeup in a certain way. And then I'm like, I just don't have the patience or like the mental energy to then go in and potentially F it all up by using a nail striper brush and just like sucking. Like I just don't have the bandwidth for it. I feel like I need to take night classes and like get good at it before I try it in the morning when I'm actually doing my makeup. And so I just always avoid it and don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> but let me know your thoughts. Do you like them? I've seen a lot of these duos too and I like that a lot better than just single pots because for you to go through all this water activated liner, it would take forever. So at least if you're getting two colors, you can mix things. I just feel like it's better for the company selling it. It's better for the consumer buying it. I like the duos and they're not mixing because you know, they're dry. But anyway, there are tons of brands that are coming out with this type of stuff or have been for a while. It's been a trend for a while, but you know, I just kind of wonder what you guys think. There's a lip butter from um, Origins, mm, I kind of like that. This is the avocado lip butter. It melts on contact to plump, smooth, and comfort lips. I love the idea of that. I wouldn't be opposed to trying it at some point. I'm going to continue to use up my beautiful lip products that I have, but uh, I love seeing that launch. Don't get me wrong. I love a lip balm. There are some gel polishes from, I think, Sally Hansen. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I mean, these look like Cruella. I don't think it's a bad collection. Maybe a little on the nose, but... I don't know. I don't know what I expect really. I'm so glad that I left my obsession with nail polish behind. When I got into the beauty community, I also got into the nail polish stuff at the time, but I also feel like that was a part of the beauty community as well. Like people talked about nail polish as well as makeup, as well as skincare, as well as candles. Like you could talk about all that stuff and it was popular. And I feel like it's a little bit more segmented where you either do like beauty or you can do just candles or or you can do just nail polish, but I don't feel like, uh, there's not as much crossover, okay, anyway. But I used to be obsessed with all the new launches from Essie and OPI, and the sinful colors were like the cheap ones, and <laughs> they'd have new collections all the time coming out. I had so many sinful colors. When I tell you I had hundreds of bottles of sinful colors, you guys, it was a lot. I'm so glad I left that behind and I'm not tempted. I just, you guys, <laughs> name how many times you've seen me with nail polish on, nails on, any of it. Although I would love to be the person with that happening, I never want to also take the time to do it. I don't. I don't take the time to paint my nails. Even though it doesn't take a ton of time, I still don't do it. I don't go get my nails done. It's just not really my life and I'm, I'm kind of okay with it, you know? And it's fun when I do it and I don't feel bad when I don't. You know, there's another Morphe palette called Desert Bouquet Artistry. I mean, I'm just not interested. There's like some things I'm so interested in and then others I like, I don't even care to talk about them. Like who cares? Sorry, sorry. <laughs> oh, Maybelline. Okay, there's a new tinted moisturizer from Maybelline. Kind of interested in this because I do want to like look at more drugstore stuff. And I think that one of the reasons I don't buy as much drugstore isn't because I'm not interested. Of course I love a good price point. You guys know I love a deal. And so like drugstore, just its premise is a deal compared to like anything at Sephora. But I realized that, you know, where I get my makeup information doesn't really showcase the drugstore stuff. Like I'm like, oh, that's why. <laughs> like, you know, Trend Mood isn't posting a ton about drugstore or every little new thing. Like some things make it, but it's not everything. So I need to seek that out, I think a little bit more. Anyway, this is the new Fit Me Tinted Moisturizer. Definitely interested in that. I mean, this is super on trend and I can't believe it's on trend in a relatively fast time. I feel like that is probably one of the biggest problems with drug stories. They'll come out with things like after the time. You're like, <laughs> okay, it's 
been a while. We're like kind of on the cusp of now changing. What are you doing? Uh, but this seems pretty fast for some of the drugstore stuff I've seen released. Ofra came out with a highlighter for Earth Day um, and it's called Mother the Mother Earth Highlighter. It's like pink and green. I did get this sent to me and it is pink and green. And I thought it was interesting because I was like, mm, I you know, I'm kind of like on the fence with duochrome and even just kind of iridescent colorful highlighters, but I did think this one was kind of interesting seeing it in person, that it's soft. And so there is something kind of wearable about it. I'm about to try, I have not tried it on. I do have it right here. In the try on video, I'm gonna try it out. So we'll really see what, what it's about. But it is, it's green and it is pink. I think it's kind of a fun launch, but I'd love to know what your guys' thoughts on like duochrome highlighters are, iridescent highlighters are. I mean, there was a time when that was the thing, the Alchemist palette from KVD, the Moonchild palette, all of those, you guys know, um, they were so popular. But this one seems like subtle enough that maybe it could still be. It's either you have to go, I feel like subtler, so you can kind of get like a more, it's this but still like wearable, or you just go all the way over the top and you're like, no, it is a glittery, like spectacular thing, like the Kaleidos one. And I feel like the in-between just really isn't there. But I'd love to know your thoughts, let me know. I don't think I talked about these, but these little five pan palettes from ColourPop are beautiful. Natasha Denona has been coming out with the mini palettes for a while. You know, it's interesting how some things are a bad dupe, but other things are a fine dupe like I don't know I guess it's just packaging none of these have like a ton of the color story so maybe that's the reason I'm not sure but I think the colors are pretty I like them I'm slightly tempted by them you know I do they are monochromatic which I've been getting out of a little but because these aren't nine pans or even larger than that I think because they're five there's less chance for them to be like repeat tones and shades because you can only pick five so it's more noticeable if that happens. So yeah, I, I do like them. They're really pretty, love seeing them in my feed. Didn't buy them and probably won't. How much are they? These are $10 and I feel like a more, I think like seven or like eight is what I would expect from these. So to see that they're 10, I'd love to know what you guys think because I don't know, you can just see that price kind of creeping up. Besame is doing a Marilyn Monroe collection. I mean, that seems so on brand for them. You know, I'm not like interested personally, but because they mostly do lip stuff it's not like what I'm focused on so yeah but that is a very fitting collaboration I do like to see that like when brands stay true to what they collaborate with the intellectual property or like people or estates essentially that they team up with I love to see when it's very much rooted in their mission as a brand and what they like and their aesthetic and all that and so at least it's that even if I don't personally want it I'm not sure if in the last one I talked about the melt blushes but I am interested in those the melt cream blushes and I've heard a lot of great reviews from you guys on them so those are kind of on my list too with all these blushes let's leave it off with these Nessa Myricks um, there are some more color fix foils in different shades coming out if you do not follow Danessa Myricks on Instagram you need to <laughs> she does the most beautiful looks I'm always so inspired and she always like reminds me that things don't have to be super complicated to be beautiful and to have artistic value you. And I mean that because sometimes I like I love washes of color I love color blocking and placement and blending and sometimes I'll do something graphic or you know a little bit more But it's okay to just have like a bold eye or a bold blush draping and a beautiful lip and just clean skin and highlighted and she just does what I feel like I want my style to be and it's just such a great reminder to me that it's like that is okay like it's enough you don't have to keep adding and I think sometimes you can get in your head when you're creating a look or you know doing anything really I mean in the world but if we're talking about makeup like I have to add more I have to do more for it to be enough and it's not true and I see her do something and she'll blend like a color on the lids and I'm like going gaga over it and it looks so good and I'm like that's enough because I love when she does it that that is that is a choice and it's a choice to not add something else that is a choice and um, editing in that way is a choice and it's always like a good reminder to me I love her stuff she's just amazing anyway love to see these colors I think they're beautiful I think that they're stunning and I've only got the Milky Way one which unfortunately has glitter in it but I'm definitely eventually going to get some other ones because I think they're so pretty and she sells me on them every time. These colors remind me actually of the Kaleidos Astro Pink 
little like six pan. Very pretty. I love those blues with those kind of like magentas and the purples. Can't wait to see all of her Instagram videos, honestly. <laughs> well guys, I'm gonna leave it there. I'm gonna leave the video there. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so, so much for watching. Of course, I'd love to hear any of your thoughts on these products. What are you picking up? What have you picked up? If you have reviews, let us know. And other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have an amazing day and I will see you in the next video. Wish me luck on the highlighters.